Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to go through how to configure your Ethernet drivers to communicate with an Allen Bradley 440C CR30 PLC. In this video, we'll be using our safety PLC trainer. And please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. So connecting to the CR30 PLC is actually the same as connecting to any other PLC. But I thought it was worth taking the time just to go through it again. So if we open up RS links, then one, I already have the drivers configured. So I'm just going to go in here. Actually, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to delete all my drivers. So it looks exactly like yours would out of the box. Okay, so now when we go to RS Who, the only thing you're going to see is this Lynx gateway. And we're not even going to deal with that in this video because we need to configure our drivers for it. And there are two ways that you can do it. First, we have the Ethernet IP driver, which will listen and discover devices that are out on a network. And obviously it is the easier way because you shouldn't need to know anything to actually use it. So let's go ahead and add it first. So we're going to go to this two-headed snake here, or you can go to communications and configure drivers. And then under available driver types, we're going to hit the drop down and we're looking for this Ethernet IP driver. So we'll select it and click add new and you can leave that at the default value. And then it's going to ask you which adapter you want to use. Now, usually you can leave this at the Windows default. Probably, probably I should put out a video sometime talking about what could happen if you were using multiple adapters and things like that. But for now, we're just going to leave it at the Windows default. And we're going to click the close button. And we're going to click on the new ABETHIP-1. And immediately we get our two devices. We have a red device here, which is the 440C-CR30. And we have our PowerFlex drive. Now, in your case, if you're using our trainer, the default IP address is 192.168.1.10. Mine is on 18 because we have this set up for some other videos where we're already using that IP address. And your drive is going to be 192.168.1.12. So that's the only difference you should see here. Now, let's say yours didn't show up. And there's a lot of reasons it couldn't. You could have a firewall that uh, blocks uh, the packets that are used for discovery. You could be going through a router. There are a lot of reasons that it could not. And in those cases, you need to tell the PC or RS Links, where do you want me to go look and see if there is a PLC? And that's the difference. So let's go ahead and configure that one. And again, we're going to hit either the icon here for configure drivers, or you can go to communications, configure drivers. And under available driver types, we're going to find the Ethernet devices driver. And we're going to click add new, and you can leave it at its default. And this time it's coming up and asking us about station mapping. In other words, where do we want to? Well, first let's just click OK. So we can see what it will look like if you do nothing. We'll click closed. And so our Ethernet IP, where it went out and found them, when we click on our ABETH-1 that we just created, it's just going to look like this. And as long as you wait, it's going to still look like this. And that's the difference between the two drivers is the Ethernet IP can discover devices. The Ethernet devices, we got to tell it what to go look for. So we're going to go back to configure drivers. And we're going to double click on the ABETH-1. And now we're going to put in the IP addresses. And you want to put in 192.168.1.10. Now you want to put in 10, but I do have mine set to 18 because I'm juggling a bunch of videos right now. So I'm just going to change mine to 18. And click OK, close. And if we give it a second here, it should eventually come up. Okay, well, now that's strange. It actually came up as an unrecognized device. Oh, wait, no. It came up as a red X. Okay, so there is a difference. Uh, oh, no. I just need to be a little more patient is what it was. So it was there. 
And sometimes it does take a second to recognize and come up. But all right, you saw it there. It kind of went through some different phases. If you had seen the red X, yeah, we can we can simulate that. Let's just unplug our cord. And if we wait a second, now we have a red X. And I gotta admit, it's a little difficult to see on the CR30, but there is a red X through that PLC now. If you see that, or you see that question mark that I saw initially, you need to stop. Don't try to connect to it and connect to components workbench. We've got to work through the problem. So how do we work through the problem? We've got several videos on it, but let's hit the major thing that everybody seems to want to glaze over, but it's so important, is let's go to our start menu and start typing command prompt, and you'll see it come up there. And I know this looks old and dossy, but this thing is how you can troubleshoot and figure it out. So first we know that our PLC should be on 192.168.1.10. So I'm going to type PING 192.168.1.10. Now I'm actually going to change mine to 18, but like I said, yours by default will be on 10. And all right, it says reply from 192.168.1.100 destination unreachable. And then we got some timeouts. Now, don't worry about really what this says as much as it didn't say that it replied. And so let's plug it in now to see what it looks like if it is there. Now, you don't actually have to type that again because I know a lot of people are like, hey, I just don't want to type all this old school stuff. If you'll hit the up arrow, it's going to bring back what you just typed. And we can hit the enter button again and now we see that we're getting a reply. It's telling us the number of bytes, the time it took to reply, and that the TTL value is 128. Again, we don't care about all that too much as much as that we quickly got these replies. We didn't get things like destination unreachable or request timeout. So if we are sure we're plugged in good, and we did not get a ping reply, the other important one to know is IP config. And this is going to tell us what our PC's IP configuration is. And as I've told you so many times, this is a Tim rule, this is not a networking rule because we don't do networking classes, is that the first three octets, or mainly this 192, 168, 1, needs to be the same as what you want to communicate with, which in this case it is. And that last one has to be unique. So our PC is at 100, our PLC is at 18, so they are unique. So there's just a quick few tools if you're having trouble communicating. So in the next video, we'll actually use this. We'll upload our program from our PLC and start talking about it. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.